Well, hello, hello, hello. Good morning, afternoon, evening. And thank you for being here today. I would like to dive back into my baggies of useful stuff. Actually, I now have a folder of useful stuff. I've been selecting things out of my baggies and putting them into this folder and just choosing the pieces I want to work with. And shall we have, take a look and see what I've got in my folder today? Here's my little folder that I made recently that I thought is a good place to stash some of the bits, the, the, my leftover bits that I want to work on immediately. And inside my folder, I have this little book. Well, it's not quite a book yet. It's a partial book. I made it in the same workshop that I made the folder. I, <laughs> I almost finished making this book, but I still need to, <laughs> to sew the spine in. And I'm going to use something called a pamphlet stitch. And I happen to find this needle that's already threaded with a short length of thread. And since this particular book is not very wide, I think that'll be enough thread to sew this book up. And I've actually punched the hole some time ago, which is probably not the best idea. I think it would have been a lot easier <laughs> to get my needle through all those pages if I had punched them and kept them clamped together right from the beginning but I didn't do that so I have to fiddle around a bit to get my needle to go through all the holes. I used I used a pin tool or an awl to poke those holes. There's three holes, one at the top, one near the middle, and one at the bottom. So to create the pamphlet stitch binding what I'm doing is I'm passing the thread through the middle hole and then I will go into one of the holes at the top and the bottom. And at this point in this book, they're both the same, really. I'll go through one of those holes. And then I will go back, skipping over that middle hole, and back through the only empty hole that's left at the other end. So there's a long stitch on one side. And I'll poke through that last hole the last set of holes at the other end of the spine there, the folded spine, and fiddling again to get it to go through here. I don't, you know, I don't know why I didn't do this at the time that I made the book. It would have been a heck of a lot easier. The next step is to go through that middle hole again. So I'll end up where I started with the two ends of the thread coming out through the middle hole. And I'm not using a good needle for this project. So this is quite a sharp needle and it managed to poke an extra hole through some of the pages. So because this is a junk journal, I'm not gonna worry about the extra hole too much. But for this project, once you've punched the holes in, it's actually a good idea to use a dull needle that's not going to make extra holes in your paper, which I didn't do because I was just using what I had already threaded up. Now this last step, this is the part that makes this uniquely a pamphlet stitch. You'll tie those two ends of thread once you get back to the middle. And somebody described this as being a pretzel, so it goes around the outside and then comes together in the middle. You'll tie those two ends of thread around that long stitch so they anchor that lo long stitch in place. And that's it. That's all there is to making a pamphlet stitch book. So I'm doing, I think, two or three knots here to make sure it stays securely in place. And the black thread that I had threaded on my needle is just six-stranded embroidery floss. Uh, the only reason I'm using the black thread is because that was what was there. Lots of times people like to coordinate their thread with their book or they'll use wax thread. And now here I've got out my series of journals that are just roughly brent bound with some string wrapped around them so I can pull them in and out. And I've got a few other pamphlet stitch books here that I've made. And here this one is, is some papers that have a an envelope as a cover and I had cut up some small pieces of artwork and stuck them in there on the different pages and I might go through and do a little bit more work on them. And I've made this little pocket here that was out of a 
Christmas card that I made several years ago, and you can see that the pages in this book are different levels of completion. Some of them are completely blank. Some of them have are completely finished. And here's another book that I've made. I'm calling this one One Face, Twelve Ways. That's a different style of book. It's called a Japanese stab binding. I'm flipping through some more of the pages in my book. Different, there's a lot going on there. I'm, in a lot of cases, I'm just sticking stuff down, trying to use up the stuff. And here is another pamphlet stitch book. This one's slightly bigger and it lives in this decorated envelope here. And I'm just looking here to see if I can find the middle so I can show you the binding in the middle of this book. There it is. There's the binding in the middle and on the outside it's sewn up on the outside. And let's see. There, that's the page that I wanted this new book to live on. I like the way the colors coordinate, but I kind of like to keep that tissue paper visible there. So I'm going to create a clear pocket for this book to sit in, and I use this transparency paper. Back in the olden days, when I was young, if you were going to do a PowerPoint presentation, you would create your presentation on your computer, and then you would print it out on this transparency paper and then you would use something called an overhead projector and you would by hand flip from slide to slide. You, sl you didn't just get to click a bot button, you actually had to put the slides on, the transparency with your photocopy on and then take them off one at a time. And you always hope that you didn't end up dropping them and getting them all mixed up. But so now this stuff, I think it's either acetate or mylar or something like that, some sort of a clear plastic that you can often find in second-hand stores. And that's, so that's what I'm going to use. I use it for all kinds of things. I use it as a, to make stencils. I use it for clear pockets. And yeah, I use it in various ways. But for here, it's just going to be a clear pocket and I'm going to use some double-sided tape to stick it down so I can still see the tissue paper, that red printed tissue paper. And because I just like the way it looks and I don't really feel like I want to cover it up. And I also think I'd like to be able to see the book while it's in the pocket too. So I know that the the double-sided tape is not going to be completely invisible through through the 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 clear plastic here but I'm not going to worry about this too much this is a junk journal it is not supposed to be a perfectly precise creation it's supposed to be messy and flawed so I'm not going to worry about that I'm going to use the book to decide how to position my pocket there and I'm going to stick it down and now here's the thing, because those top edges are going to get some wear and tear and the paper that I'm sticking this down on is not necessarily all that strong. It was actually some thickish, but it was just a piece of wrapping paper, thickish wrapping paper, but nonetheless, it was not intended to necessarily be strong. It was something you're supposed to just wrap your gift up and throw away. So I'm going to give it give the, those top edges some reinforcement with these paper fasteners that are similar to the brads that I used when I made the woman with wings. But this time, instead of ma creating a moving element, I'm going to use them to to keep the top edge secure so it doesn't get ripped. And I, I used that hole punch, but I realized that that was a mistake because it made quite a big hole that was it was a, probably a bit too big for the the brad. And then the other thing that I realized is my hole punch, and I tried a bigger one as well, was not going to fit in to, to secure the second brad. So the second one I just used my pin tool, my awl again, but I think I should have probably done that with the first one as well. It would have been a more secure thing. And there you go. My pocket now, my my book now fits in its pocket, and I'll just trim off the extra end off the thread there, and tuck it in, and it's got a new home. And yeah, I can see that the clear pocket is kind of lifting up there, and there would have been quite a bit of stress if I hadn't put those paper fasteners there. I quite like the way that looks. 
And now the other thing that I had tucked into my folder are these napkins and tissue papers, paper napkins and tissue papers. And these make really great transparent backgrounds. And you can see that strawberry printed one is still a, a whole napkin, but the napkins come in, have several layers of paper. And it's only the top one that has a pattern, pattern on it. The other layers are just white and just, they just add some bulk. So you can peel off the, the white layers and just use the top transparent pattern layer to really create interesting backgrounds and effects in your, in your artwork. And I'm using a little trick here that uh, one of my friends told me about. You can use a bit of tape to help you to get those other layers off, off to separate the layers in your napkin. And it's a little bit easier than trying to do it by hand. So just stick the tape on the back, and I guess you could stick it on the front, but two, and then I peel off, peel off the layers, and it's a bit easier. It's still a little fiddly, but there you go. Now I've got just the top layer of my napkin, and I'm gonna glue some of that onto this page here, just to add a little bit more decoration. I feel like the red and green color scheme goes well on this page. <laughs> I love that it says rules there. So I'm going to use a glue stick, just a regular old glue stick to stick it down. So that's one of the ways, probably the quickest and easiest, but it has a few drawbacks. Like the glue sticks don't always stick things down very well. It's hard to get the glue just right to the edges of where your tissue is going to go. And you should glue, you should apply the glue to the stiffer paper and not to the tissue. If you try to rub a glue stick onto the back of the tissue, you'll just end up with a big mess. But the problem is it's hard to know where the edges of the piece, the, the tissue paper are going to end up. So when you apply the glue stick, it doesn't always dry completely hard, so you want to cover it all up, and then I'll. But then afterwards, you'll have to come back and peel off, tear off the pieces of tissue that don't get stuck down. And I'm going to work on another page. I feel like this page is really busy, and every time I look at it, I just don't know how I would even use it. So I feel like I want to change that background so it's a little bit more usable and I think just covering the whole thing with a napkin will kind of make it a little less there'll be a little bit it'll be a little bit less busy now that bird on the left hand side there that was also a napkin that I glued down onto a piece of book paper and then I cut around the edges I, I can't actually call what I do fussy cutting because it's never very perfect this time I'm going to use a different glue the pattern in, in that carousel or it feels like it really connects with the flowers that are in that are in this napkin. And now after I started applying the glue, I remembered why my book is just has these temporary bindings so I can pull out pages and not mess up the other pages while I'm applying glue or paint to just one page there. So I pulled out the, the, the other side so that I can work on this without getting the medium all over the, the other pages in, in the signature. So this time, as I said, I'm using, this time I'm using matte medium and I'm just using our local art supply store house brand. It's a really excellent art supply store and I really trust the things that they sell there. Their staff is really are very knowledgeable and I feel like they wouldn't sell something if it didn't work well. There are some art supplies that don't work well and I feel like the stores that carry them are have less integrity. Again, the the matte medium, I would put it on the more sturdy piece of paper and not try to apply it onto the back of the napkin. Once I stuck the napkin down, I did put another coat of the matte medium and gently, carefully on top of the, the tissue. And the tissue, especially when it's wet like this, tends to tear really easily. So I can use that quality to tear off the edges but it can also get damaged really easily. And because this is a junk journal, I don't worry too much about it. I did this series of drawings that were in and around the community where I lived to give, and I made photocopies of them to give to people when I was 
on a trip to Europe so people could get an idea of what my home in Canada here is like. And I've got extras off them that I haven't used for anything for years. And they're just photocopies. I have the original somewhere still. So they ended up in my book here, but I don't really want them to be a feature. So I'm going to have them fade more into the background. But you can see how the tissue paper and the napkin are both transparent. So you can still see what was underneath peeking through, but it's just less less graphic. It's less, less, it has less importance. It's faded into the background. When I work in my junk journal, I like to allow whatever is underneath to inform what I do on top. And on this side of the page, what I notice is there's somebody's hands sticking through and then there's the word queen. So in the future, when I go to add on to this page, I might use those, those two elements to to inspire what I put on top. Maybe not. Maybe it might just be the color that will inspire what I do next on top. So I might go with those reds and yellows, the warm colors or something like that. Who knows? I don't know where this page is going next. I'm just putting this layer down for now. And later on, I'll think about what I'm going to do next. And I'm just going to go through the book here and add in my different tissue papers until I don't have any more tissue left. And this page here, this is a little thank you note from one of my art students, one of my young art students. is very sweet, but unfortunately it got damaged, some water spilt on it at some point. And there's really nothing on the back here other than his name. So I'm just going to cover that up with these really bright, brightly colored roses here. I think that'll be fun will be a fun background for this side of the page. And again, I'm just covering the whole page. You know, you can do, you can cover part of the page with a napkin, the whole page, whatever you like. But they're, they're a fun way to add color. And you can see some of the finished pages, some of the partially finished pages here. Another thing about having this, my, this particular junk journal still in sections, I can work on one page and one of the signatures, I can set it aside to dry and I can immediately start working on the, another page. Now this napkin again, I really like the way that it, it kind of balances the vase of flowers that I have on that facing page. So I'm going to cover up this map here with the napkin and I think that I'm hoping that you'll still be able to see some of the coloring in the map sort of peeking through the napkin and the yellow and the turquoise there really seem to work with the napkin the napkin pattern as well and yeah you can see it there a bit like you see the yellow and the blue poking through and then it kind of balances with the flowers and now let's take a look i went through and did some more pages off camera there was this page and it just looks like a hot mess right now but it doesn't really matter it's a background there's going to be more on top i don't know what the more is going to be but there will be more coming on top i think this is really interesting this could go in very interesting directions before i finish up there was one other thing that i heard about recently and that is to glue them onto to stick them onto fabric and I've got this piece of muslin that I've been using as a cleanup sheet to clean up my paint brushes so there's all kinds of color and paint and just like I did on the paper I am going to glue down using matte medium just the very thin top layer of this of the strawberry napkin to see what it it looks like and it just sort of melts into the fabric it looks like it was it was printed right onto the fabric after you finished it's very cool I think this is really interesting I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this page because I'm still using it as a cleanup sheet I'm going to maybe have to find another piece of muslin to use as my cleanup sheet thank you for watching today and I hope to see you again really soon